Hello and good morning, YouTube. This is Greg. Thanks for stopping by. It's uh, December 23rd, and I'm here at Amicalola Falls State Park, uh, about to begin the approach trail to the AT in Springer Mountain. It's uh, about six o'clock in the morning. Done my off hours registration and parked in the lot across the street and in just a minute I'll take another shot of the, uh, the little arch that's over uh, behind the visitor center over here is the uh, little arch uh, that points you up eight miles toward uh, Springer Mountain uh, for the approach of the AT. Uh, so we'll pick you up again a little later. Thanks. Okay, here it is. 6.30 in the morning, a couple of days before Christmas, and this is the back side of the visitor center at Amicalola Falls, and the first steps up to Springer Mountain, which will then be the first steps to the AT. Catch you again uh, somewhere on the trail. One of the things that's so amazing about the approach trail and a reason to hike it is that you get to follow the creek at least all the way up to Amicalola Falls. And in the wintertime, it's just beautiful in the summertime. I'm always just a bit amazed at the beginning of any trail but somehow in the providence of the good God that an eternity that I've got to be a spectator to grace on this level, much less a transient participant and get to walk walk along it for a while. Yeah. Go God. Good job. Oh man. Okay, have a bit of a even trail and downhill on the way to Spencer Mountain, Springer Mountain. Today in the morning it's 40 degrees, shed a couple of layers already for this part of the hike comfortable beautiful weather leaves are just starting to fall and there's some really great views I don't know what I was thinking starting at the approach trail at the visitor center I'd forgotten what I don't know 850 steps up to the top of the falls were like jeez Louise I had to stop and rest two or three times just to catch my breath and then I get up to the parking lot and I see some guys starting some hikes and they've parked uh, right there. A couple going in to the, to the backcountry inn that's here in Amicalola Falls State Park. So, uh, one of the things I like about hiking in the cooler weather is that if you manage your layers right, it's comfortable and 
not sweaty and gross like hiking in the summertime. Uh, today, uh, equipment uh, starts with primary layers uh, and merino wool for minus 33 degrees, uh, and NG liner socks and darn tough wool, uh, keen ultralight trail runners. See Big Three backpack, 20 ounce Z pack, Arc Blast, Sleep System, 10 ounce ENO Tech Nest, and 4 ounce Helos suspension, 8 by 10 Z packs, Cuban fiber tarp with Kevlar ridge line at uh, 6 ounces. What else? Oh, for winter time. And I should ask Will Wood and Joe if they'll make an arc blast that has a little more volume in it. I have found that with down under quilt and top quilt and reasonably warm and pretty cold weather with the, I think it's 700 fill down ENO quilts, um, when I discovered recently by adding their hollow fill under quilt around the 700 fill down that I was toasty all night long. It was the most comfortable I think I'd ever been in cool weather. The temperatures were down in the teens. Howsome ever at I think 55 liters maybe. The Cuban Fiber Arc Blast just has some space issues. Uh, and besides Two under quilts, a top quilt, a tarp, hammock, and suspension. I have my food bag by Z Packs with enough food to get me from Amakaloa Falls down to Mountain Crossing at Neal's Gap. Have a minimal first aid kit that's just a Ziploc bag with some band aids and ibuprofen in it. Uh, what else? Cook kit with toques. Titanium 1100 millimeter pot, milliliter pot, spoon, Chinese knockoff, pocket rocket, and the smallest MSR gas canister, uh, smart water bottle uh, for emergencies. I have a Sawyer filter bottle, uh, hiking poles. Closed bag just has a minus 33 degree merino wool quarter zip hoodie, an extra pair of camp pants, and an extra pair of an NG liners and darn tough wool socks for every day, which I guess is my concession to luxury. The base weight is nine pounds, food and water is nine pounds, so I'm at 18. and. Uh, Still at just shy of 60. I'd forgotten what the uphill climbs around here were like. This one's supposed to be 25, 30 degrees, which doesn't sound insane. Uh, but wow, Gregory winds up sitting down a bit. So let me turn this off and I'll pick you up when I break for lunch. Have a snack or something. Okay, see you in a bit. On the approach trail, the last thing you really see before the uh, final climb to Springer Mountain is this little shelter and this set of signs that points at the shelter and a spring that's, I don't know, five or six minutes down that hill. So, uh, this is the final uphill to Springer Mountain. And when I get there, after I finish passing out, I'll bring you back and we'll have a look at it. Okay, see you in a bit. Blaze one, Springer Mountain. Wow. One of the great things about hiking in the winter is that there is no one here but you. 
There are signs that say that they discourage camping up here due to the amount of food and bear activity and stuff. Somewhere just to the north of here, they say they have a campsite, so if that way is west and this way is east, then north should be off the mountain somewhere. At any rate, I'll look for it. It is uh, about two o'clock. I got started here uh, about eight o'clock for a 10 mile hike from the parking lot of the visitor center up here to Springer Mountain where I have unceremoniously dumped all my stuff. So uh, let me go find uh, where their hiking place, where their camping place is, and I'll say hello to you before I turn in for the night. Okay. Okay, here we are about 0.1 mile north of Springer Mountain. There is a wonderful looking privy campsite, fire pit where I'm gonna make dinner here before the sun. Looks like it has about an hour left. Here's my home away from home tonight. It has a e and Tech Nest hammock, down under quilt and top quilt, and a Z-Pax tarp set up in a tent mode to keep the north wind off me. So, uh, let me get going and cook some supper, and I'll pick you up the next time. Okay, bye. First order of business, a fire, food, and my shelter for the night. And now I'll be filled up with hungriness, trying to get something to eat. Okay, see you later.